we're back in the shop here and I'm steam bending some fairly hefty pieces of mahogany that are going to go onto the deck of a friendship sloop, a large friendship sloop. She's 38 feet on deck. And uh, we've got the brackets set up on this makeshift bench here in a curved form. And that's the form or the shape of the boat that we're bending these things to. So we're not bending them around the boat, we're bending them on a table to the same shape that the boat is. And we, like I said, we've got the brackets set up to that shape. It's easy to do. There's numbers and numbers of different things that uh, this system allows you to be able to do that you couldn't do with a steam box. I don't think I could get these out of a steam box, any steam box, and probably bend them to this shape and have as little recall as I'm gonna have with these pieces right here. So it's a proven technique, and uh, we're gonna show you how it's done here. We're gonna start off by taking this piece off the bench and starting with a brand new piece here. Now you've seen me do this before. We're steaming this thing in a plastic bag. We buy this plastic bag material in a roll and just drag it down over the piece of material. That is our steam box right there. And uh, it's very nice because we can bend the piece of wood with the plastic bag on it. You can see the piece of wood inside the plastic bag. You know, you can see the bag inflate. You can tell when you've got real good steam coming because it inflates the plastic bag quite nicely. Now, if you look closely right through the bag here, you can see that there's some moisture on top of the wood and it's blowing bubbles up through that moisture. That's a releases of some gases that are inside that wood. And that's just an indication that that wood's getting awful hot. And uh, like I said, that's an odd thing to see because in a steam box, you're not gonna get a look at that. You know, you, you certainly can't run out of water. You've got to keep that steam coming. There's numbers of different ways to do that. And we're just generating steam by heating a volume of water and then letting it go up into the bag all by itself. We don't have any pumps. We don't have any electricity. We don't have any garden hose down here. We're not, you know, using a garden hose to fill the container as we go along. We're just filling it ourselves, pouring some fluid back in there. We've got a special technique that we use to test the water in the can so we don't run out of water and it works just fine. We don't have any gauges on it in order to see how hot it is, and we don't have any gauges on a plastic bag over the material or anything else. We're just gonna get it as hot as we can get it. And uh, water has a funny habit of boiling at 212 degrees, so we know we've got that when we see steam, and that's about as good as we can do. So one thing that's really important, though, is that you don't let all the water boil out of that tank because it'll start to burn the bottom of the tank and it'll cause the bag and the steam to be very brown and discolor the bag. It's just a mess. It's not what you want. You don't want dry heat. You want heat in steam. So you do not let it run out of water. Now, the smaller amount of water you've got in it, the hotter the steam is. So you want to keep it down around two inches or so if you can, maybe down to an inch and that's about it. You don't want to go any lower than that. And uh, I struggled really with trying to figure out how you would really figure out how much water is still in there as you're boiling. And I thought of a float and I thought of all kinds of different things and uh, I don't know, I've tried numbers of things and none of it seemed to work. This is finally what I came up with that seems to work really good. I have a hollow tube here and a little piece of rubber tubing on the end of it, and I just put it down in the tank, and it's mocked right here at the top of the tank. It's just got a red magic marker line on it, and uh, I put my mouth on it and blow bubbles in it. You can hear them, and you can feel them in your lips. And then you just pick it up until the bubbles stop and grab it with a pair of pliers, and then you can simply look at it and see how much water you've got. There it is right there. We've got three inches of water in there. And that's about a gallon and a half. And that's fine for us. And uh, we could work it down to about an inch. And then like I say, we'd have to take and check it right away. One of the things, you've got steam coming out of here as you're checking it. So if you know you're gonna put some water in it, you take a little bit of water that's not boiling, dump it in there first, that kills the steam. Then you check the water, you know what you've got, and then you add what you need. This technique just is fantastic because we bend it in place and uh, it's still generating steam. Not only is it still generating steam, we let it generate steam for quite some time, maybe two hours after this piece is bent. And the advantage to that is it just has tremendous amount of time to melt that lignin that's the glue that holds the fibers of the wood together. Now, 
Once you melt that lignin, you want to keep it melted for quite some time. And that's the secret to this thing, is that it's already bent and it's still steaming. And that is pretty much the shape that we want right there. So it it's basically has no recoil past that. So that's good, but I'm not going to leave it that way because I'm going to let it cool without the spacer in there. You know what I mean? I'm just going to keep that right up there. That's good, man. So here is the piece that we've just steamed and it's cooled down now and you can see the curvature to it and it's very very close to the curvature that we need to put it on the deck of the boat. It might just need a tiny little bit of springing but without having steamed it like that first there'd be no way in the world I could ever get it on there. It's very wide and it sits on the deck very wide and uh, this is the way to go right here. Now we're just going to put that one away and we're going to go on to putting another piece up there and bagging it up and go on because I got four pieces left to go.